Hello and welcome to the summary completion video of Your Future, Your Life. My name is Eric Francis Coppolino, friendly neighborhood astrologer and investigative reporter, delivering the news in the form of the weather known as astrology. So uh, I, I do these 12 sign readings and uh, they, they always seem so daunting at the beginning. I mean, I have um, I've I've put approximately in uh, at least seven hours uh, speaking to to you uh, by way of this uh, video medium explaining essentially the same chart twelve thirteen different ways and it's always a learning process and this is one of those ways in which uh, astrology goes beyond the the books and the references and the preconceived ideas and to be able to do this it's necessary to really look at the chart in a fresh way every time and come up with something original. And uh, that, that leads to a lot of uh, contemplation and thought. And um, what I have come out of uh, this process with is the understanding of how crucial the, the Mars retrograde at the end of the year is. Um, I say this because, uh, first of all, it's Mars retrograde in Gemini. Uh, that is a challenging sign for Mars to be retrograde because G Gemini wants inner harmony and can uh, can uh, brook so much a limited amount of uh, of disharmony. You know, maybe creative or a little bit of uh, tension or friction. That's fine. Uh, but Mars retrograde is uh, is pretty intense and it lasts a long time. And you have a cool sign like Gemini being impacted by a hot planet like Mars, uh, that can be challenging and it can be difficult. And so I think that uh, all of what we're uh, you know, going through now, living through now, witnessing and experiencing now, is a, um, a warm-up for, um, for uh, Mars retrograde in Gemini. Now, the thing that makes this uh, transit that so tricky... Um, is that Mars will be retrograde in a square to Neptune in Pisces. Neptune, very slow-moving influence in Pisces. It's been in Pisces since the 2012 era. I think about 2011 or 12 it went in. And uh, this is the thing that has people more in love with the, their beliefs than with reality, and it, it is uh, really pushing the whole thing of um, it's an illusion, therefore it must be true, or someone said it, therefore it must be true, or it makes me slightly uncomfortable, it, it wakes me up from my nar narcissistic narcotic haze, therefore it must be wrong, and I'm going to come and get you and cut off your food supply. This is the nature of the internet right now. Uh, and this, this is why cancel culture is the way that it, that it is. Uh, people are so uh, af afraid to be shaken out of their illusion bubble that they'll just attack anything that might uh, wake them up. And that's a that's a rather fitful dream. It's not certainly not one that I would uh, want to be having. Uh, and so this is an effect of th this kind of haze, this... this um, you know, I believe it, therefore it's true, Hayes is very much a, a factor of Neptune in Pisces. Uh, this is going to last for some more years, I think till 26 or 27, so we've got this going on for a while. But the, 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 the retrograde of, of, of um, Mars through Gemini is not going to be pleasant for people who are committed to illusions. Uh, it, it is a it is a tense series of aspects, and uh, it, the whole retrograde begins in the autumn with Mars holding one long square. It wiggles around, it goes a few degrees out, it comes a few degrees back, but basically one long square of uh, Mars in Gemini to N Neptune in Pisces. So if you know any astrology at all, you know, put put the two of those things together. And and this is where you might say that the mental realm of 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 Gemini activated by Mars made made contentious by Mars with uh, with 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 the cl collaborations really heavily tested a uh, square meaning maximum tension turning point internal struggle uh desperate urgent need to take action square neptune so what this seems to me like the uh the, the constant push 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 to wake up and pay attention um which, which will result in some 
a kind of really contentious event, I think, manifesting in the autumn. So I, I, I want to just propose that we be careful for this. I think that discernment uh, discernment reached an all-time low in 2020, and it, it kept bottoming out in 2021 uh, as all, all of this uh, mandate shit was pushed on us and, and people were... Uh, w- w- were openly and uh, actively convinced that uh, a- every person of a certain type was a threat to them and their family and their children and going to kill them and throw them out in the street and fire them from the job they've done beautifully for 20 years and all this stuff. This is this is an all-time low of discernment. Discernment is picking up right now, though, as people figure out that uh, there's a lot of things they're being told that simply are are not true. They're not valid. They're not verifiable, and they uh, the the only the only effects they have are the are the the effects of the fear that is being spread. Uh, so uh, th- this is um, <clears throat> a, a kind of a thing that we're uh, likely to be shocked out of or shocked into more deeply with this. Um, uh, l- late 2022 transit of uh, Mars square Mars square Neptune and Mars retrograde. Uh, this spans about uh, seven months from mid-August th- through um, mid-January. I'm not sure I've got that right. Let's see, September, October, November, December. Uh, I've got to check that. But m- uh, Mars goes into, uh, oh no, March. It's March. It's not pitch. <laughs> no wonder I'm missing a few months. Uh, Mars goes into... Um, uh, Gemini in uh, uh, August, in mid-August, it leaves Gemini in March, uh, and and March is a very busy time. A lot of things happen all at once in in March, and just in the course of about three to four weeks, we have Saturn going into Pisces. It makes one transit into stay, and then uh, we have Mars. Uh, Mars exiting Gemini and going into Cancer, going over the Aries point, a cardinal, one of the cardinal points, therefore it contacts the Aries point, and at the same time, uh, Pluto makes its first foray into Aquarius. And so, um, I, you know, I, I spend a lot of time uh, doing me- media study work, I uh, try to apply media theory to everything that I'm doing, and um, I think that the the single most profound, uh, let's say pol- politely, spiritual influence or, or de-spiritualizing influence, either way, uh, is the digital environment that we are in. And there has never been a media environment that has swallowed us more completely than the, uh, than the, than the, than the digital environment. Uh, we are completely subsumed in this to the point where, where there there is no getting out. Uh, it, you know, it's it's possible that thanks to uh, digital technology to literally stay in your home permanently and have everything delivered to your door and do your job on the internet and all all of that. And so it has created a a, a world where people are very. Uh, self-absorbed and provoked into action only on the internet and where the um, th- the physical world itself can be seen as a very scary, uncontrollable, and unpredictable place because there are all of these threats. Uh, it, it is only in a world that is under the thrall of the digital environment that looking at someone could be construed as some form of assault. Looking at someone used to be just looking at someone, and if you didn't like the way someone looked at you, you just walked away or told them off or something, but it was not construed as some form of a mortal threat. And now we live in a world that is full of mortal threats, that is to say a physical world, because the only place that people feel like they belong pretty much is in in the digital environment. But the digital environment is not a particularly safe place either, um, as as anyone who has been canceled one or more times has found out. um, it It is an incredibly hostile place, and that hostility is spilling into the physical world. And one of the things that the digital environment does is it lures people into forgetting who they are or it drives them out of body to the point where their intellect and their ability to orient is 
uh, so mashed up that uh, they they are living basically in, in a in a state of vertigo, not knowing which way is up, not knowing who they are. Uh, when we project ourselves at light speeds, like I'm doing now, we we do so. Uh, first of all, at our peril, but second, leaving the body behind. It is a, it is a strange thing to contemplate, uh, you know, for example, that I could be existing at this very moment in, in a hundred or a thousand or a million places at once. Uh, and this has a, a disorienting and destabilizing uh, influence on us, and uh, the, the most of the dis disorientation and destabilization takes place in the physical world, and and it is why in in the physical world uh, you you think that you can be sickened and killed by something that might only exist in the form of a computer file, but you cannot catch a a a, a digital syndrome in your physical body unless we're talking about the way in which the digital environment has trained you mentally to think that you are a digital device and therefore you can be threatened by it. And this is much of what is happening in our world is that bit by bit we're being convinced that we are digital devices and we're being trained to act like digital devices, to think and to feel algorithmically, to use what Celia Farber calls algorithmic morals. That's her whole explanation of cancel culture, is that, uh, that morality has been re reduced to a series of algorithms, a series of if-then statements where, therefore, if you meet the qualifications of one little if, then you can take that out all the way, like, 20 miles down the road and... Uh, and and uh, some ab absurd and completely obscene conclusion is reached based on something that may not have even been true in the first place. Um, and and this is the I mom, mamma mia, this is frighten me. I'm not serious listening to me. This is see what I'm getting at. So I had the I, thought I had the thing off. Okay, so um, airplane mode. That's not off, and there's no such thing. Okay, so. Um, glad I caught that on camera. So, uh, the so, so so there's two things happening. Really, mainly two things happening um, th that uh, I'll put together. I'll add a couple of other details, but um, we're about to experience Pluto entering Aquarius. This takes place in uh, in March of 2023. The the ingress uh, stretches out over about 18 months, if I've got that. Correct. I believe there's going to be two uh, retrogrades back into Capricorn, um, and therefore it is a, a a kind of a long, slow transition. That might be a good thing, but it, but it's also un unlikely to um, produce kind of a satisfying revelation. Oh, that's what this is going to be like. But I assure you, we have been seeing what that's going to be like for the past two and a half years of the ongoing crisis that we uh, are in. And the ongoing crisis is nothing more or nothing less than the crisis of uh, be, being the products of our technology in a world that has become wholly digital. So we, we are being conditioned to be digital devices. We are being broadcast, all soaked. Our bodies are being soaked. I live in a fairly small city of 23,000 people, and I'm, I'm looking at, uh, you know, easily 30 digital Wi-Fi networks that, that I, I'm personally soaking in the middle of, and then there's a lot of graphene oxide going around being given to people in the form of material and capsules for medication they're taking in, in the form of injectable substances, which is amplifying the uh, these digital signals uh, to those who have this stuff in their bodies, and uh, and and th th all of this, all of this mimicking computers, interacting with computers, being trained by computers, thinking computers are better than us, projecting our entire soul and personality onto the internet, all of this has transformed our entire idea of what a a person is. 
Um, and this has been going on, I think, in, in major ways since the late 1920s when Eris entered, um, er Eris entered Aries. We see Eris here toward the end of Aries, but, but, in, the, um, but in, the, uh, in the late 1920s, Eris had just entered Aries, and this was the, uh, this was the, the time of uh, the licensing of radio stations, the first experiments in television, and uh, and and the uh, the patenting of 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 a uh, of a transistor like device, uh, which which I've seen a photo of. It's about the size of a coffee can. It's not the one that ultimately became the transistor, but the the concept was there. And um, and and now, basically, for for much of a century, we have been living under the uh, the influence of of just constant. Uh, first of all, mass communication, and then also being driven into out-of-body experience. So we're very disoriented and therefore subject to believing any lie that seems scary enough. So there's going to be a huge test for society during this uh, era in the autumn of Mars, about to station retrograde in Gemini in a square to Neptune. This is really the operative fact. Mars and Gemini... Mars and Gemini right here in late Gemini. It stations retrograde in a square to Neptune, and then it's going to hold that square through much of northern hemisphere autumn, and then it's going to retreat back. It's going to retreat uh, back into um, kind of early mid uh, Gemini, and then it will station direct in January, and then it will make another square to, to Neptune, and then uh, in March will enter cancer. So uh, I am seeing some form of another uh, crisis injected into us by way of all of this digital uh, digital device divisiveness. Uh, and, uh, and, and Mars and Gemini certainly is potentially a divisive influence. Uh, and uh, the square to Neptune provides a kind of an anesthesia to that. And um, what I'm reading, uh, rereading Understanding Media by, by Marshall McLuhan. Uh, a book that I would propose is a, um, a, a, a life-saving type of, of, of book. I, I would say the two most, well, I used to say the most important book you could read was The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. But um, uh, I still, it's still one of my favorite books. But uh, in the in the immediate sense, in this um, world where essentially sex and gender have been reduced to kind of cliches, uh, we need to understand the the media environment. And what he was getting at, I was just uh, having coffee this morning, and he was getting at is that um, that that we're li we're living out this m m narcissistic myth, uh, thinking. That the that the reflection that we're looking into is someone other than us, that it's not a reflection that it's someone else, and so we're we're looking into this pond of the media, thinking that we are uh, looking at something else, not realizing that in in essence we are looking into a mirror, and. Um, uh, I, I will say to you that, that that fact influences the way that I speak to you it, it, because I understand that a lot of what I'm doing and speaking to you is setting an example for how you can speak with yourself and reason with yourself and be able to communicate with yourself. But uh, what McLuhan points out is that the, that the word uh, n narcissus actually is from a deeper Greek root, narcosis, which is the uh, a, a a drug that makes you go to sleep. It's a sleep inducing thing, and so uh, the 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 thing with Narcissus is that he was didn't realize that it was him, and then he was induced into a kind of a trance uh, through this. And he and and, and uh, Grandpa is saying this is this is what we are living through in our media environment now. The um, the, one of the most important things it does is it robs us of our sense of self. And that sense of self is often found by Mars. It's found by Aries. 
uh, and and there's a lot of Mars and Aries going on right now. Chiron is in Aries. Jupiter is going to be in and out of Aries, and Mars and Eris is in Aries, and Mars is going to be retrograde in this kind of narcotic, potentially self-destructive square to Neptune for months and months. And so the thing is that the divisiveness and the, 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 the kind of narcoleptic haze going on as a result of, uh, of, of what, whatever this media intrusion is, is likely to be numbed out or dulled out by the square to Neptune. It's going to, it's going to put a lot of people to sleep. And, and it, but the thing is, it's going to be sleeping with a, a, a dream of conflict going on and people love these internet conflicts these dramas they love to get involved uh, like like people watching gladiators and uh, and and the, the more blood that's spewed the more money they throw or the, or the more uh, the, you know the, the, the more people are uh, injured and embarrassed and destroyed the more fun that it is on the internet here it's a very hostile place this global village, and so um, uh, I, I am concerned about this, and uh, I'm concerned about the influence in every individual person. What I've done in 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 the Your Future, Your Life readings is explain this transit for every single one of the signs as it manifests in the context of your chart or your solar chart. Now, um, when this Mars retrograde process is completely over. Uh, in uh, in 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 January, which I considered sorry March, it stations direct in January, but it it leaves Gemini in March, and so my uh, late late career definition of when something like Mars retrograde is over is when it leaves the sign where it was retrograde, and we leave all that energy behind us. That's in March, and then several things happen in March. First of all, Saturn goes in to Pisces. Saturn going into Pisces is a wake-up call vis-a-vis uh, -vis the presence of Neptune in Pisces. This is the, a, a potentially a very rude awakening for people. And it's especially a rude awakening in a time when people have largely suspended their discernment and then have to wake up after whatever bender it is that they were on, say, for example, going from drugstore to drugstore and getting all the different kinds. Okay, so then the next thing that happens is Pluto goes into Aquarius. And Pluto going into Aquarius, to me, looks like there's going to be some shift, massive shift in the digital environment. But that shift was already well in the works and manifesting during the retrograde of Mars square Neptune. So the retrograde of Mars square Neptune will end, the fog will clear, and then something will happen. When we'll see something manifest, people who are paying attention would have seen this very thing manifesting even as early as August, even potentially well before that. But this new topic, this new content that's going to come along uh, will be obvious uh, to people who have some discernment in August, and then all, all of this stuff is going on. Like, what was going on while all the schools were closed? Like, what was going on while all the businesses were closed? Why were all the business all? Why were some of the businesses all the small businesses were closed? Why were the large businesses open? You, you if you ask that question in in 2020, you were lucky lucky if you didn't get thrown off every social media platform, lose all your friends, and never be invited to Thanksgiving dinner again for the rest of your life. That is the discernment problem. Questions are not allowed. Questions are encouraged around here, and I suggest we keep asking them. I suggest we keep asking them, especially where uh, our involvement and the experiencing the impact and the effects of our media environment are concerned, because this is really the one and only thing that is making a difference, and it is the one and only environment to which we must adapt. The overheating of the digital and artificial intelligence environment is, uh, it dwarfs the overheating of the atmosphere assuming this is even happening, the, 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 the overheating of the 
of the AI digital virtual um, uh, enhanced and artificial reality environment is itself heading for a meltdown. And should that device in some way experience a meltdown, say, for example, around March, that is only a metaphorical extension of people having lost their minds and their identities as a result of so much not only obsessive focus on the digital realm, but the complete submission of their entire identity and personality to this realm of algorithms and avatars, but also the, the, abil- the, the um, meltdown of, of being able to tell true from false, right from wrong, and even the chaos between these concepts. And so let's add on the note that one possibility of Mars retrograde in Gemini is, well, what is that saying about the binary environment, the binary environment described beautifully by the binary sign Gemini, the twins? Let's really pay attention to this whole trip, this whole scene. A lot is happening. Um, A a lot is... um, about to happen, uh, and uh, honestly, to me, there are not enough people who are really either really interested or n- know how to get above their distrust of everything to at least even be able to ask an honest question that they're that they're feeling, even be able to define an honest question, a sincere question, and then to be able to hold open the space of the unknown long enough to get some response to that question. This basically, in sum, is uh, what I have learned doing the uh, Your Future, Your Life readings. These are very personal readings describing these kinds of themes and many other personal themes specifically relating to profession, work, relationship, health, and money uh, c- tailored to, uh, to the 12 signs and rising signs. All right, signing off. Uh, from a beautiful, cool, late spring day here in upstate New York in the Hudson Valley of New York State, uh, about an hour south of the capital, two hours north of New York City. Absolutely gorgeous day out. I was out for a while this morning. It's about 65 degrees and beautiful, and I hope to uh, be back outside sometime again soon. All right. Thank you for your business. Thank you for your trust. You can purchase these readings right below this video or go to planetwaves.net. Bye for now.